Let's now develop the product class further by adding some methods, especially accessors or uh, mutators. Uh, this is from my earlier video and I forgot to actually terminate the debugger and I should and hopefully you should do that too. Okay, so let's now stop the debugger and also switch back to the Java perspective. That's what you should do always. Okay, so let's now, uh, before I add, uh, go ahead and add the methods, I would like to assign some background reading for you as, uh, as usual. Okay, let me go to the slides over here. So starting from slide 37, we are going to use the dot notation. Actually, I already visualized the dot notation. Uh, for example, this dot uh, original price, that's what I did earlier in the video, okay, in the previous video. That's about the dot notation you should really review. For example, let's say Jim is the context object variable storing the address of some variable uh, of some objects. So if I say Jim dot nationality, the dot over here really means I want to retrieve the address that is stored in Jim and go to that particular memory location and find out what's the nationality uh, for that particular object, right? So that's kind of the uh, visualization we did before, okay? So you can, you can also review that from the previous video. And uh, we'll look at uh, also the this reference over here, right? Whenever we talk about this, it's really referring to the context object or target objects. Normally, I'll just say context objects. And this is really for disambiguating uh, if the variables if necessary, but if you chose the parameter names, as I said before, to be something that does not clash with any of the variable uh, attribute name, then you might be okay. You, you don't really have to use this. You don't have to. But I would say uh, people usually like to uh, choose just the same name, so they don't have to come up with uh, inconsistent name, right? Okay, so that's about using the this reference over here. and. There's a very important term called variable shadowing, uh, which we'll get into. Okay, variable shadowing over here, right? And let's say, for example, in this particular constructor over here, if I say name is assigned to name, I did something like that in the earlier video uh, together with you. So now if you say name is really being shadowed by the name as the parameter. So there's no way for you to refer to uh, the name attributes by either of this. So to really do that, you have to use this, right? This is uh, something called variable shadowing, okay? Also important for you to review. And common error, which is uh, exactly the point that I just mentioned. And we talk about mutated methods. In that case, the return type should be void, right? We'll see mutated method in just a moment, okay? We see some easy one in this week, but we'll see some more complicated one next week. Okay, accessor methods as well. In that case, the return type is simply not void. It can be some primitive type like a double, or it could be some reference type like a products or even array of products. And about method call, okay? And for this particular example, I would like you to really go over all the bullet points I'm making over here and then to, understand, to answer this particular question, why we are going to, if we try to invoke the same two methods over here, but somehow we're going to get distinct values printed out to the console, right? And turns out answer should be line number five, but why? Okay, if you really uh, want some more explanation, you can feel free to go into this lecture recording. Uh, that's the first part of the recording and go in there to see if the, if the explana uh, explanation will be sufficient for you. If not, you can come back to me. Okay, so that's up to slide 47. Okay, we've got two more slides. Okay, and also this slide here, I want you to pay attention to it. That's something I also mentioned before. Whenever you're trying to make the mutator method as an expression, either for printing out the value, or trying to assign that into some variable using the assignment operator, it would not be okay. It would simply would not compile. Okay, the way to do it would be simply let the method stand alone for the mutator call. For mutator, okay. So here we're assuming that set weights returns void. On the other hand, for accessor method, what you should do is to either print it out. Uh, in this case, we assume get BMI returns a double. Either you can print out its return value, or you can assign its return value to some variable using the assignment operator. And typically, you wouldn't really just have the uh, accessor 
method call standalone. In that case, you're wasting the return value, right? So the cross over here doesn't really mean it does not compile. It simply means it's useless. Okay, that's something I will also ex expect you to try on the Eclipse if you're not too sure what the cross here really means. Okay, so that's about, uh, I think, uh, one more, one more slides. So this is just about the principle of uh, designing parameters for your methods, either for constructor or for mutator or for accessor method, very briefly. For constructor, the input parameters, like, uh, oh, this is what I meant by input parameter, it should be a list. Input parameters should be about for all the attribute value that you want to initialize. For every one of them, you should really give a input parameter. And for mutator, typically you want to change the attribute values. So you will have the input value, uh, input parameter for every attribute that you wish to modify, similarly to the constructor in a way. And for accessor method, you want to return some computation results from the uh, current, the context objects. So you want to put the input parameters for for those that would be uh, that would be uh, that would actually allow the computation uh, to actually go uh, go forward. For example, you can see if we're talking about the point class for the two D points. If I say get the uh, get the distance from the origin, I know the origin is always zero zero for x and y. In that case, I, in that case, I don't need any extra information to calculate the distance. So that's why I'm passing nothing. It's simply empty. On the other hand, if I want to get the distance from the current point, the context object, let's say if I say P1 dot get distance from P2, right? In that case, I want to see what the distance is for between P1 and P2. So P1 alone is not enough. So that's why I need just another extra parameter to actually help me out with the computation, right? It's just a general principle. You can go over them and then apply them uh, when you do your exercise or assignments. All right, so that's about the uh, slides I want to assign you uh, assign to you for background reading only until slide 49, okay, for this uh, current video. Let me go back to Eclipse. So what I want to do now is to add the some simple accessors and mutators for products. Let me go back, to, uh, let me close the product app uh, and then let me, let me leave it, okay. Let me go back to the product class, uh, double click to maximize it, okay. You might have learned back in uh, 1022 or 1021 in the first year about how to do accessor mutators. Let me review uh, just one pair, accessor mutator. Let's say I want to, well, typically for every attributes in the class, you want to make them private. And then if you really want to get, uh, give access to this particular variable, either for retrieving it or to for changing it, you want to define the public accessor or mutator uh, respectively. Okay, How do we do that? Let me just do one here, and I'll show you there is a way for Eclipse to generate uh, generate accessor mutator automatically for you, for the simple ones. For the complicated ones, you still got to rely on yourself, okay? How do we do that? Let's say I want to define, let's say, how do I return the value for model, okay? So I'm going to say public as opposed to private. And accessor should return something, right? In this case, uh, model attribute is a type string, so that should return string. And then the convention is get, get model, like that. And in this case, we don't need any extra information for the computation. We just need to return this value. There's no extra input we need in order to complete the computation. We just want to return. All right, so in this case, we can simply say return, and then we can say model. So this will be the simplest way to implement it. However, if you really like, what I typically, I like uh, myself, I like to do to say this the model, okay? This the model just to make it very explicit to me that I'm really uh, trying to return the attribute value model, right? But even without, you can see if I put model here, you can see it's really referring to the model at line 12. Even if I got rid of it, let's say like that, if I move my mouse over model, it's still referring to the attribute model. So that, that means in this case, without this dot, it will still work because there's no shadowing happening in the input parameters. So that's okay. Okay, but just for my style, I like to put this uh, this dot model. And for you, it's kind of up to your call. Okay. So this is some simple accessor. Let's do another mutator over here. Okay, let me just give you more space over here. And also, it's going to be public, and this is intent. We, if we call this method here, we intend to modify the value for model. So it's going to be void, it's a mutator, 
and we're gonna say set. So set is the uh, standard uh, prefix for the uh, mutated method name. So set model. And here we will need to know what kind, what new value you want to set the uh, model into. So that's why we need one parameter. And the parameter type should be string, just the same type as the attributes. So we'll say string over here. And then this in this case, of course, you can see I deliberately chose the name of the input parameter to be the same as the model because I find it very convenient. But now it comes with the price. If I simply say model is assigned to model, I'm going to get a uh, I'm not going to achieve what I intend to achieve. What I should do instead is by saying this the model, which refers to the model over here, should be assigned to the model over here, right? Pretty much like what we did for the constructor, okay? Very easy accessor mutator. And now question for you. If I want to define the public pair of accessors and mutators for every of the remaining five attributes, how many more do I need? Well, easy math, two times five, I need 10 more. But it might be quite tedious for me to actually do five here, five more for accessor and five more for mutators. Eclipse can generate the standard accessor or mutator for you in this manner, okay? How do we do that? I'll show you right now. Well, you can, uh, we don't need uh, one for model anymore. So what I would do is I'm going to just select this part over here, right? I want to generate accessor and mutator for finish, storage, this uh, connectivity, original price, and discount value. Once you select them, right click on them, and then go to source, and go under generate, getters, and setters, right? Getters are accessors, setters are mutators. Go there, okay? So now here it allows you to choose which one do you want to generate. If for example, we don't, uh, oh, since we only highlights uh, everything but model. So that's why you don't see model appearing over here, right? That's why I selected only a partial, uh, only partially the attributes. And now for every one of them, you can choose to generate maybe the getter or the setter or both. If you want to generate both, you will simply choose uh, the, uh, the attribute here, right? You can see that one chose all of them. Right, I want to generate for all of them, the uh, getters and setter. Cool, okay, so that'll be 10. And you can choose where to uh, put them. Maybe I want to put them maybe after, uh, you can see currently the set model, uh, can I move? Okay, I cannot move. But the set model is currently the last method in the product class. Maybe I want to uh, put them in the end. Okay, and then all of them should be public. And it can be sorted by getter and setter pairs. It, it can play with the options here, but the order of the methods, as I said before, does not really matter in Java. I will say generate. As soon as I generate, you will see 10 new methods generated at the end. If I say generates, if I scroll, you can see after set model. So these are the ones generated for me. Okay. And let me just highlight some points for you quickly. You can see we got get finish. Very similar to what we uh, what we did for get model, except that Eclipse by default generate the simplest possible. That's why they didn't include this dot. But you can put it if you wish. Okay, and also for set finish, like me, Eclipse simply chose the same name as the attributes in the generation, and then so, so that's why they will say this dot finish is assigned to finish. And we got get storage, set storage, uh, and and etc. How can you uh, see all the methods in a particular class? You can use the outline panel. Let me just show to you. Oh, by the way, you can see the stars uh, over here right beside the product. That means uh, it's unsaved. Always say Control S or Command S for saving your work, always. Now, if I want to see all the class, uh, all the methods in a particular class, I can switch to make sure currently you're double click on the, uh, the class. You want to show the outline and switch to outline. So these are all the methods you have, right? It's also very handy. So let's say I want to go to this particular method, double click on that, now I'm get storage. If I, if I want to go to this particular attributes, I can double click, now I'm here, right? It's a very convenient navigation tool for you on Eclipse. In case you don't see the outline panel over here, what can you do? You can simply go to window and go to show view, and you can go to outline over here, right? In my case, I got it, so I don't need to worry, but you can choose it. You just gotta drag and drop to the correct place right beside that package explorer. That's what you can do, all right? 
Okay, so that's about generating setters and getters. I want to define some extra methods, but I already generated some, some of them automatically to save my time. But I, I want to put two more, okay? Let me just put them at the end, okay? You can sort them if you wish, but it's completely up to you. Since it might make sense to sort them because I kind of said accessor should be one section, mutator should be one section, but I'll leave that to you, right? If you want to uh, sort them yourself.